Hey everyone, this is Joel at MetaGeek, and I just wanted to make a quick video to give you a very fast introduction to IPA and some th different things that you can do with IPA. IPA is our packet capture and packet analysis tool that gives you wireless packet capture in a unique way. It uniquely visualizes airtime usage for your wireless network and your wireless environment. So there are four tabs along the top, starting with the, the capture tab. This has got some recently opened files in it, as well as some sample captures that you can open up if you're just trying out IPA or if you don't have an AirP cap or a way to get packet captures. Um, it also has the AirP cap control panel here, which will show up when you have plugged an AirP cap NX and that's a product by Riverbed. Now IPA can open up most uh, packet capture files. You can get packet capture files uh, from, uh, from Windows and uh, you can get them from Linux as well if you're pretty good with Linux and the command line. Uh, but if you're using Windows, you'll need to use an AirP cap NX, which is our special product that gets us all the management frames, all the data frames, all the control frames. And that this uh, control panel just shows up when you plug in the AirP cap NX. Next is the visualize tab, and this is where you're going to spend the most of your time in IPA. What we do with this tab is we visualize airtime usage with charts and graphs, and we'll go through this and I'll show you all this stuff in detail. Next is the analyze tab. This will give you expert tips for your wireless network. It'll point out things that maybe you can fix or improve uh, to help the performance of your wireless network. And finally is the packets tab where we give you a more traditional look at those wireless conversations that are occurring between 802.11 stations. So let's start with the visualize tab. I've simply opened up one of the sample packet captures. I really like this capture because it's a good mixed environment with a few different things that I can show you. So the first thing we should talk about is the airtime graph here. This multi-layered pie chart shows us all of the airtime that was used and who used that airtime. It's uh, arranged in multiple layers. The innermost layer is our unique networks. So we can see we've got a couple of major networks here. We've got Bronco Guest and Bronco Wireless, two different wireless networks. Now on Bronco Guest, if we go one more layer out, there are at least two access points. Um, so we can see that there's an access point here that took up a little bit more than half of the used airtime. And then there's another access point here that didn't use up quite as much airtime. There's a couple more here as well. So these are all uh, access points that were on the same channel when we took this wireless packet capture. So innermost ring is network, the next ring is indivi individual access points, and the next ring out is individual clients. So we can see that this Apple device, of everything on the channel, this Apple device is the one that took the most time talking. And then we can work our way down through those different devices, most of them being Apple devices here in this environment, which uh, isn't uh, very surprising based on what I know about where this packet capture was taken. The final ring out is uh, wireless subframe type. So we can see what kind of traffic these devices were generating. So we can see that this Apple device was mostly transmitting quality of service data frames. Uh, there were also a few block acknowledgements and a few RTS and a few CTS. Um, so we can see uh, that this was carrying pretty much a normal wireless conversation. We can see exactly whether it was sending management overhead or whether uh, whether that conversation consisted of data or not. Now up above here, this is the airtime usage over time graph. So the max up here is 100%. That does scale. We see that it hit 100% right here. Um, whereas we can see that we were pretty good for airtime most of the time. There wasn't a whole lot of activity on this channel. Uh, just a real steady around 8 eight to 10 percent here with a couple blips here where we actually hit 100 percent airtime usage. So what we can do next is we can drill down into these packet captures to get a closer look as to what was going on with these clients. So if I click on this Apple device, we'll drill down into it. So the Apple device is now in the center and we can get a closer look at what kind of frames were being sent. Again, quality of service, block acknowledgements, RTS, CTS. We also get some interesting information about this specific client. Notice the retry rate. The retry rate was 83%. So 83% of the time, this device repeated itself. We can also see uh, how uh, or what kind of data rates this device was using. So we can see that uh, we had about 13% of the time we were on six megabits per second, but most of the time we were on 18 megabits per second was how fast this device transmitted. You want devices to transmit quickly so they can get on the air and get off the air quickly and not consume airtime. It's a good thing that we don't see uh, very much one megabit per second. That's good. That's, that means that this thing is performing fairly well in that way, but I am kind of concerned about this, uh, this high retry rate. That might be something that I want to check out. So now that we have drilled down into this device, we can can uh, get a closer look at it by going to the packets tab. So the packets tab by default will show you everything that happened on the channel. 
And so if I if I uh, back all the way out, and so we're looking at the entire channel, these are all the packets that we saw on the channel chronologically. If we click on some of these to drill down into them, then we're then we're going to drill down here as well. So if I click on our specific device, the Apple device, now we are only showing the conversation that occurred between that access point and the Apple device. So I can see all these retransmission flags, lots and lots of retransmissions here, and so I can tell that this device uh, was having a hard time. Uh, was having a hard time communicating with the access points. So that might be something that I want to look at. The next thing I'd like to show you is the Analyze tab. So I've drilled down into a network by clicking on a device. So we are we are looking at Bronco Guest right now. And maybe we'll look at a specific access point by clicking on that. If I visit the Analyze tab, notice that it's automatically starred my access point that I've drilled down into. And I can unstar this and star different ones if I want to. But it's going to give me some expert tips about uh, what it sees on this channel. The, the most prominent thing that we see here is high retransmits. 59% of the time, uh, all the traffic on this channel was a retransmission, and that's pretty bad. We can see which devices were the worst offenders. This Intel device had a retransmission rate of 99%. That's really bad. We might want to go track that uh, that device down. If we can find that device by the MAC address, it could be something as simple as it's too far away from the access point, or uh, maybe one of the antennas has, has come unplugged uh, inside the laptop or something like that. And so we're giving some suggestions here on, on things that, that might cause that problem, like a chip set issue or overlapping uh, channel interference or maybe even non-Wi-Fi interference as well. Maybe we need to check that out with a, uh, a spectrum analyzer. There's also some filters along the top here. If you want to apply filters manually instead of by clicking on things, you can apply those filters as well. Like you can look up the conversation between a specific access point and a specific client MAC address really, really quickly to filter down to that stuff. Also, if you forget what the colors mean out here, blue for uh, blue for data frames, for example, you can go up here to the subframe filter drop down, and you can actually get a cheat sheet for what these uh, what these colors all mean. Like for example, I know that this purple here is a management frame. It's probably a probe response or probe request or something like that. So you can quickly see how much of this was was just management overhead and how much of it was actual data being sent. Finally, last thing is uh, you can use IPA to uh, do some really fast and intuitive filtering. So for example, let's say that we wanted to export all of the Apple conversations. These are all these are all Apple devices, so Apple, Apple, Apple. So here's all the Apple devices that were on our network. And let's say we want to export this to Wireshark to do some more uh, in-depth analysis. Of course, we've, we've applied that filter here. So we've got Apple applied. So these are all the Apple devices. But we can also click File and click Send to Wireshark. And IPA will send this, uh, send everything we filtered to Wireshark for more in-depth packet analysis. So if you've ever struggled with uh, with Wireshark's really powerful filters, IPA might be a really great way for you to do some really fast filtering. So you can just filter down to some exact packets that you want and then send them to Wireshark for even more in-depth analysis. And that's a very quick overview on IPA. If you have any more questions about IPA, feel free to contact us or visit our knowledge base at support.metageek.com.